Okay, the last example, we're going to do a proof. So, write a two-column proof. Before we begin, you should always look at what's given, what you have to prove, and the diagram. Look, look at it and see, okay, how am I going to get from point A to point B? Okay, so AB, this is what we're trying to prove, that AB is parallel to EF. Okay, so we're trying to prove that they're parallel. Angle... 1 and angle 2 are congruent. This is congruent. And then angle 1, ooh, where's the angle? Okay, angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Angle 1 is also congruent to angle 3. So one time congruent, two times congruent. Okay, so let's, um, so then we know that since these two angles are congruent and these two angles are congruent, um, I know that since this, these two angles are going to be, have some kind of special relationship, uh, my, my theorem and my postulates say, well, if they have a special relationship, then the lines are parallel. Okay, so I'm going to just do this step by step. So here are my statements, my reasons, I'll put right here. So statement number one, we know that we have to write the given, so it's angle, let me write it a little bit higher to have room. Number one is that angle one is congruent to angle two, and angle one is congruent to angle three. And the reason for this is that it's given. Number two. Well, if angle one is congruent to angle two, and angle one is congruent to angle three, then I could say that angle two is congruent to angle three. So if I read it, okay, I'll read it this way. Angle two is congruent to angle one, and angle one is congruent to angle three. Then, Angle two is congruent to angle three, and this is transitive property, right? Property of congruency, okay? Not equality, but e congruency. So, um, number one, if A is equal to B and B equals, equals B equals C, then A equals C. Okay, that's transitive property, um, and it's we're using congruency. So if it's not equality, it's congruent. Then from there, since I proved that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, I know that there are alternate, um, alternate interior angles, right? So alternate interior angles are congruent. That means I can just say, well, since alternate interior angles are congruent, then these lines are parallel. So step three, you can do, um, you can say that angles two and angle three are um, labeling them as, con as alternate interior angles, or you can just go ahead and write out what the proof statement is, what you're trying to prove, since you already proved that they're congruent and they're alternate um, interior angles. So depending on how your teacher wants you to set this up, this will be either step three or step four. So my reason is going to be if alternate um, interior angles are congruent, then the lines, now this is not the complete theorem, but you can just shorten it. Lines are parallel, okay? And that would be the proof. And make sure, again, since we haven't done proofs in a while, uh, that the given statement always comes first and the proof statement always comes last, okay? It's like you're trying to get from point A to point B. If you're um, driving somewhere, you start from your house and you're driving to school, um, your house is point A and your school is point B. There's steps to get there. 
it's the same thing. Okay, proofs are exactly the same way. You need to have your steps to get from point A to point B. Okay? So that's it for this lesson. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching education.com.